Uh, on July 7, 2013, in the early morning hours, approximately between 1 a.m. and 3.30 a.m., four homes were broken into and burgled in the Berry Road and Park Lawn Avenue area. In one of these cases, the suspect sexually assaulted a female while she was asleep. When the female awoke, the suspect was startled and fled the home. Based on the geographic profile, uh, the time period in which these offenses were committed, the description of the suspect, the method of execution of these crimes, and the similarities in the property that was taken from these homes that were targeted, uh, investigators have established that the culpability of these crimes all fall upon the same suspect. Uh, moreover, on September 18th, 2012, which was a Tuesday, uh, again in the early morning hours between approximately uh, 12 a.m. and 5 a.m., six homes were broken into in that same area. Based on the previous criteria that I've already described, uh, the criminal responsibility for these events uh, have been it's been concluded that uh, it is the same suspect that is criminally responsible for the events that took place last weekend on Sunday, the 7th of July. Based on descriptions provided by witnesses of the suspect's appearance and his actions, uh, investigators have assessed that the suspect is a male with a dark complexion, not excluding olive skinned, uh, five foot eight inches in height to six feet uh, with a thin build. <clears throat> He's presumed to be a young male uh, between his late teens and 30 years of age. And he has demonstrated uh, athletic ability, flexibility, agility, and speed in the commission of his offenses and in his escape. Uh, the suspect has uh, obscured completely or partially uh, his appearance through the use of a, uh, a makeshift mask uh, utilizing pieces of cloth or clothing. Uh, last September, we released uh, a photograph along with uh, our alert to the public regarding the suspect that we were looking for. Uh, and this is what we released. Uh, this investigation, as it continues, we have now some uh, surveillance footage from uh, residents in the area. What you're going to see is um, a person of interest, and this is the suspect. And this is a person of interest we'd like to be identified. So that's a different person, or that's also the same? We don't know. It's, it's a possibility that it's the same person. Okay, uh, the video segment, I mean, by his, in this video, uh, determined by, by his gait and the clothing that he's wearing, it seems that it's a possibility that this may be our suspect, but at this point we can't say he is. He is a person of interest that we'd like to be, we'd like to have identified so we can, we can speak to him, possibly further investigate him. Um, he's, uh, these, these two images that you're seeing, the one of the person of interest and the one of the suspect, these were not captured on the same night. They're on, on different occasions. So it's not, it doesn't, it's not one, one right after the other. Then, as we're looking through or watching when the video was taken and and the circumstances, and just say again, who's the suspect? Who's the person of interest? This is the person of the, the suspect. You'll notice has his head uh, wrapped up in what appears to be a T-shirt or some sort of cloth. The person of interest is a person who 
hasn't obscured his, his identity at all. This is the person of interest. You can see he's not wearing anything on his face. He's just Clothing walking looks through. Pretty much the same, though, I'm sorry? Clothing looks similar. Clothing looks similar, and again, his, his gait, the way he, he conducts himself, his physical appearance, seems to be quite similar. These two videos were filmed at the same location. What nights? I'm sorry? What nights? The one where the suspect is seen here is the night of the offense, the evening of the offense. On Sunday? On Sunday, yeah. A Sunday morning, I should say. Yes. yes. Uh, sometime in the vicinity of 2 a.m. And the other one was captured approximately about a month earlier. Okay. And, and you don't know if they're one and the same? That's one of the possibilities. I, I can't confirm that they are, but it is something that we're, we're pursuing. Ever a vehicle seen in any video surveillance you've seen? No. So does that lead you to believe the suspect lives in the area? It is a definite possibility that maybe not in the area, but it, he could be uh, in the outskirts or, or, or in the area. In that one, the one surveillance footage uh, clip that shows the gentleman walking towards who you say is a person of interest, you can pretty clearly see uh, his face a little bit and some of his hair. I mean, is there a description that you're putting out for this person of interest? A little well? bit. Well, we have. A uh, picture's worth a thousand words, so we're hoping that based on this, somebody would, somebody will be, uh, give us some information and say that they believe that it's this certain person. Or even better, if the person knows, he knows where he was at that time, and he knows his own walk, and he knows how he looks, he can come forward and say, "Yeah, that was me," and explain as to why he was he was walking around that property. Is the suspect breaking into the houses to sexually assault women, or was that above and beyond all of his other uh, break-ins? He is breaking into homes. He is uh, removing property. And in some cases, he is sexually assaulting victims. What, How many he... cases? How many sexual assaults have occurred? Last Sunday, there was only one. As for... Um, September 18th, off the top of my head. I know there was, there was more than one, but I, I know there was at least two, but I, I, can't, I can't positively say out of, out of six how many of them were sexually assaulted. What, what does it say that this guy appears to have sort of laid low for the last several months, almost a year? It could be perhaps he was out of the city for the for the time period, maybe he's returned because now it's the summer. It, uh, it could be that perhaps it wasn't because the summer was ending, um, he didn't find it as easy to break into homes as he does now that the summer's starting again. We'll have to ask him when we, when we capture him. What's he stealing? He's generally stealing, he takes cash. Um, he's taking cash in a variety of denominations and currencies. And he also generally picks up uh, things that can easily be held in your hand or pocketed. And you said that he's flexible, agile. Can you just tell us why? Is he having to in slip through windows? or? In some of the ways that he's accessed the houses and in some of the ways that, uh, because in a lot of cases he's been seen by the residents uh, as he's leaving. And he's very quick and, uh, as I said, agile. He's, he's been known to hop over fences and and uh, railings, so that's where that. Uh... I'm hoping that they can uh, recognize the person that is uh, captured on this video, and either by by uh, the the face of the person of interest, or in terms of the suspect, uh, clothing by the way he moves, uh, and can hopefully give us some leads and some some names that we can follow up with. What kind of offender are we dealing with here? I remember, like last year when, when you guys put out the press release, I think it was um, the inspector that said that you know, this is somebody we want off the streets right now, a very dangerous type of person. Um, just describe for us again, what, what kind of guy are we dealing with? Why is this so urgent? Well, obviously it's, it's very unsettling, as you can imagine, when, when a person goes home and they go to bed at night and they go to sleep. It's a basic human right that you should feel safe in your own bed. And the actions of this particular person are causing people to be deprived of that right. 
So that is why we want to get this person off the street as soon as possible. Have any of the victims of sexual assault been in bed with, you know, a partner or a husband, anything like that? Like, as for the details of the, the sexual assaults, like out of respect for our, for our complainants and also to protect the integrity of the investigation, I really don't want to disclose much, much more I'm detail. I'm wondering like how brazen he's being. If brazen, they... yes. Okay. So how important is it to get this guy on the street? Very important. Uh, as I said, everyone likes to feel safe in their homes. Everyone in this, uh, in this neighborhood has now been alerted. They're on edge. Uh, it's the summertime. People like to feel comfortable when they go, when they go home. Now they're in such a position where they, you know, they're, they're going into their houses and they're being, they're being put out, can't sleep at night. You don't know if somebody's going to break in or exactly what they're going to do. And the fact that he's sexually assaulting people as well heightens, obviously. Heightens, uh, the urgency. I'm sorry? Yes. Yes. What advice there's always that there's always that possibility. What advice are you giving the homeowners in the area? I mean, as you mentioned, this guy seems to have had a lull. It's the summer months again, people are keeping their windows and doors open. What advice are you giving to people in the area? We're encouraging people to just report any suspicious activity to the police and again if anybody has home surveillance footage to uh, to turn it over to us, that if it could be helpful. What about keeping lights on outside the house, keeping the windows locked, making sure to check their homes, or at least the perimeter? Well, I mean, the thing is, these offenses, they, they're not uh, a result of any action or inaction of the complainants themselves. They're the result of the actions of one person, and that person right now is out of society's control, and we just want to bring him in. Uh, as for how people conduct themselves in their homes, um, I'm, I'm not going to really stand here and tell people what they have to do to, to secure their homes because I think everybody knows their level of comfort and, and how they want to live. So uh, I, I can just say that the suspect, he's targeting vulnerable areas of homes, which are doors and windows. Yes, 22 division is uh, is concentrating. Okay, this concludes today's office. Thank you for attending.